Hello, I'm Steve Larson, engineer with Cap Pumps. Today we're going to talk about thermal valves, why we use them and how they work. And basically we use them to protect a pressure washer system or similar type system from overheating if run too long in the bypass condition. So we're going to start with uh, defining a pressure washer system. We'll start out with a pump. Of course, it's drawing water in from a reservoir or a garden hose feed. And then it comes out of the pump, goes through an unloader valve, which then feeds to our, our high pressure hose, a shutoff gun with a spray nozzle. And this is a pressure washer system. The only thing I haven't drawn yet is the bypass line. Because typically this bypass comes out of the unloader and heads back into the pump in its alternate inlet port. So we're drawing water here from our garden hose feed through the pump, through the unloader, and out the trigger gun. So when I have this trigger gun open, I'm going to see five gallons per minute or whatever my system is set at, and then I'll have five gallons per minute flowing into the pump. This, of course, is our fresh cold water. This is our water that's going out to our work at high pressure. And everything is fine as long as the system is running with the gun open. But as soon as I close this gun to um, move things or change position, whatever, and I shut the gun off, so then this drops to zero gallons per minute because I have no flow, which also makes the incoming water go to zero. So now I've got no fresh water coming in. I've got no discharge water going out. But we know that the pump is always pumping five gallons per minute. So where is this water going? It's going through the unloader down the bypass and back into the pump inlet. So what we have is we have a loop here of water that's coming out of the pump, through the unloader, back to the end of the pump, and around and around and around. And as long as I keep the gun closed, it will continue to run in that condition. And of course, something running in a loop like that over time will start to heat this water because I'm still burning some horsepower. It's got to go somewhere. It's going to go into the water in that loop and it's going to raise its temperature. If I let it sit too long, I can exceed the temperature ratings of the seals and valves, retainers and O-rings and things in the pump and cause heat issues and damage to the pump. So I want to avoid that. And along comes then the thermal valve. And what we do is we'll take where this tees back into the pump, we'll take and we'll add a thermal valve right there. And what happens is, is this, as this loop is running and the temperature rises, this, this thermal valve will watch it and as soon as it gets to a certain point it will open and discharge some water out there. Of course we always want to be careful that this discharge is not directed at any person or animals for injury or anything like that. So consider that when doing the mounting and the plumbing. And there is a port on the thermal valve where you can add a small hose barb and a hose to direct it where you need to. Now, what's really happening inside that thermal valve is what we're going to cover next. So I'm going to draw it in a much larger scale. Here we have the inlet body, and of course there's threads here, so we can thread it in. Then there's a large spring in here, a cavity for the spring. And then there's a, what we call a pill. It's shaped like this, and it has a copper head for good heat transfer. And then this pill is filled with wax and there's a plunger on it that as that pill heats up, that plunger goes forward and it will open up. Now that's the same type of pill that you'll see in an automobile thermostat. So it's a very reliable uh, piece of equipment. Then we add a cap on here with the discharge port. And then there's an O-ring seal here so that when it has cold water attached, or applied to it, the thermal valve is closed off and there's no water leakage. But as soon as it gets up to temperature, this pill will move this direction and come off the O-ring seat and then allow water to come out the discharge. And so while this water is circling around, all of a sudden this opens, boom, it comes right out, evacuates, and when water's coming out here, we're going to start some flow coming in. So we bring in fresh water, we discharge the hot water, as soon as that cold water works its way through the unloader system and through the bypass and into the thermal valve, it will cool this 
uh, pill, and then it will reshut, reseal, and shut off again. So for about three, four seconds, you're going to get a burst of hot water. And as soon as that evacuates that loop, it'll reshut, and we can continue to uh, be in the unloaded condition. Now, what we're also going to cover is where to mount this thermal valve. If I were to take it off of here, perhaps, and maybe mount it into my inlet line here, now, when this water's in a loop, the temperature rise is still happening, but it, it's not getting to where the thermal valve is located. So we have to be very careful to mount the thermal valve in a position so it's going to see the temperature rise. Get it in this loop, preferably as far at the end of the bypass loop as possible just before re-entering the pump.